Welcome to chapter 20, section 1. We are going to be talking about electromagnetic induction in this chapter. And specifically, we're going to take a closer look at electricity and magnetism once again. So what we're going to do today is we're going to recognize the relative motion between a conductor and magnetic field induces an EMF in the conductor. Remember, EMF means voltage. We're going to describe how the change in the number of magnetic field lines through circuit loop affects the induced electric current. And we're going to learn what Lenz's Law and Faraday's Law are and how we can solve problems using induced EMF and current. <clears throat> so electromagnetic induction. Okay, this is an important vocabulary word that you guys should know. Okay, so what this means is you can induce current in a wire without using a battery. Okay, and this process is what electromagnetic induction is. Okay, so this is just doing this. So as we learned in last chapter, okay, a current in a wire produces a magnetic field. Okay, we can also switch that around. Conversely, moving a wire in a magnetic field will create a current in the wire. So let's look at a picture. Okay, so here, this is my wire. Okay, and you can see my magnetic field here is coming out of the page. Remember that blue is the magnetic field. Okay. And if I move that wire in this direction, right, those electrons are going to move up the page, okay? And what it does is it essentially acts like an EMF, right? And remember, EMF is just kind of a fancy way of saying voltage, okay? So it's like creating a battery, okay, but without the battery. So you're generating the current flow because, remember, this battery is what causes these charges to move, so now we're causing them to move by moving them in a magnetic field. So, when we do this, okay, the angle affects the induction, okay, because only the parts of a wire perpendicular to a field will have induction. The other thing, key thing here to know is that the wire, okay, or the field, either one, must keep moving, okay. As soon as it stops, it stops inducing the current. So it must keep more moving in order to induce that current. So let's take a look at a picture. Okay. So here are three examples of a wire loop moving in a magnetic field. It does need to be a loop, okay, because it needs to be a circuit. Okay, and that's the only way we're gonna get electrons to flow. So here you can see the whole plane of it is perpendicular to the field. Okay, here it's acting through some angle. Okay. And here, they show it with a little bit of an angle, but really this one is parallel to the field. Okay. So what happens is when it's perpendicular, all of these corners, all of them, sorry, sides, all the sides are perpendicular to this magnetic field that's coming out of the page. So this one gives the highest EMF, okay, the most current. When it's at an angle like this one over here, okay, then it's only inducing current in the parts that are perpendicular because the angle matters, okay? So it only induces current in the parts that are perpendicular. So this one has less, okay, a lower e a lower current or less EMF, okay? And then this one here that is perpendicular, or parallel, excuse me, this one has no current because none of those wires are perpendicular because no wires are perpendicular to the field. So angle matters. There's some other things that we can uh, affect induction with as well, okay? So we just mentioned the angle can affect the current induced, but there are other things. So for example, if we change the magnetic field lines, which really means that we are going to move the magnetic field, okay? So we don't just have to move the loop of wire, we can also move the magnetic field. The other thing we can do is change the strength of the magnetic field, okay? Make it stronger or weaker, change it somehow, that is also enough to change, to induce a current. So I actually really like this table in your book. Okay, I believe this is on page 710 or 510. Let's go 510. I'll let you know for sure in class. Um, but 
it kind of summarizes the different ways that we can create current in a loop. So what we have here is just moving a loop into a magnetic field. And I want you to notice if you use the right hand rule, you can see that the current is induced this direction around the field. So maybe pause here and try that for a second and see if you can get it. Remember though that current is electrons. Okay. So moving it into or out of a magnetic field. Another way okay, is if we actually rotate it. Rotating it is constantly causing the magnetic field to change. Okay, and so that causes a current to constantly be induced. And we're going to learn a lot more about this method in the next section. And the last one, okay, is if we change the magnetic field. So you can change its density, which means you get more dots per area. You're increasing its strength or you can weaken it. Okay, and then also if you change the direction of the magnetic field. This one's a little bit hard to see in this, right? But if you took the magnetic field from this way and then suddenly flipped it so it was all into the page, okay? or changed it some way like that. Sorry, those don't look like very good X's, do they? Imagine X's into the page. So that just kind of gives us an overview of the different ways that you can create a current in a, mag in a loop of wire using a magnetic field. So the last thing here we're going to learn about is something called Lenz's Law. Okay, and what Lenz's Law says is just this. The magnetic field of the induced current is in a direction to produce a field that opposes the change causing it. Okay, who? what in the world does that mean? Okay, so if we have a bar magnet and we move it towards a coil of wire, the magnetic field will be opposite the bar of magnet. And if the bar magnet is moving away from a coil of wire, the magnetic field will be in the same direction. Again, oh my word, all these words, how is this going to make sense? So let's take a look at a picture and see if I can help clarify things. Okay, so here's a picture about Lenz's Law. What it says is that if we move this magnet towards this loop of wire, which we already know will induce a current, the direction of the current is going to be such so that it resists. Okay, it needs to resist, or I think the word we used on the other page was oppose. Okay, it's opposite. Opposite's not a good one, but oppose it. Okay. So if we look at this picture, notice that when you're moving the magnet towards the coil of wire, okay, you get this effect here where you have the north here, right, north to north, because those two repel each other, okay? Same poles repel. So when things go toward, okay, that's your key word, toward, you're going to get it so that the magnetic field induced here is going to be such that it repels this. So it's going to have to be like this. So you end up with two norths or two souths. However, when you do the opposite and now you're taking the magnet away from it, okay, and it's still inducing a current, it's going to oppose that motion of you going away. So what it's going to have to do is attract. So you're going to get this north south effect here because they attract. Okay, and attract is still an opposing or resisting motion because it's it's pulling opposite of the direction you are moving. Okay, so this is when you are going away. Okay, so this one is for toward and this one is for away. Okay, so that will always be true. And if we had these both of these magnets switched around, right, if this was south and this was north, then this would be north and this would be south. Or if this was south and this was north, then this would be south and this would be north. Okay, so it's always going to resist and oppose. Okay, so you'll get the like poles to repel it when you're going toward it, and you're going to get the unlike poles to attract when you're moving away from it. So this is what Lenz's Law is saying. The last thing is also Faraday's law. Now I have the equation here, but we're not going to really do any calculations, but there's one thing that I want you to know. So when we have this situation, and let's just take a quick look. We've got south, north, south, north. So which way are we moving our magnet right now? Can you guys tell me based on Lenz's law? Well, we have an attractive set here, right? So I must be moving that bar magnet away from it. Okay, now that we've done that, back to Faraday's law, okay? So looking at it here, EMF, remember EMF is essentially our voltage, okay? And it's saying that, that EMF, that voltage, is going to be stronger based on the number of loops, N is the number of loops. So if I create more loops here, it will be a stronger voltage, okay? And this is the change in the magnetic flux, 
Okay, so that's basically how fast I'm moving this in a certain amount of time. So if I want to increase my EMF, right, I can increase the number of loops, okay, or I can move the bar magnet faster. or whatever I'm moving to cause the change, okay? And then obviously decreasing it would be just the opposite, right? So if I want to decrease EMF, I'm going to decrease N or move slower. Okay. So this brings us then to the end of section 20.1. Let me know if you have any questions in class and I will see you there.